Hey everyone, it's John and today what we're going to be doing is doing some more network automation and in this video we're going to be using Nornia to deploy an OSPF IBGP fabric across the entire topology here using nothing but loopback addresses. That means that there is no physical IP addresses on any of the production network's interfaces. Now how am I going to do that? I'm going to be using the IP unnumbered command. So if you don't know what that is, we'll dig into that first and then do the automation but fair warning first. You can actually do this on some platforms. Usually I'm using my Cisco viral images. I'm actually using Cisco IOU because when I did my testing, it was not working on the viral images, okay? So just be aware of that. If you want to follow along or in real life, make sure your actual equipment can do this feature. Okay, doc, so with that said, let's kick on, let's do it. Okay, so let's first look at this IP unnumbered thing, okay? So what I'll do is I'll first go into the router here. And what you can see is I've actually got no IP addressing configured on this at all, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loopback called loopback0 and I'll just give it all the address of 1.1.1.1 and that's that, okay? Now, if I actually go into the interface here and I do IP unnumbered loopback0 and then I do an IP OSPF network point to point What's going to happen is when I create my OSPF, or OSPF1, and I'll just put all the networks in, okay? Just for speed. Okay. And I go over here. And do the same thing. Enable int loop zero IP address, all the twos. And int, uh, I'll do it on both interfaces actually, so ETH. Okay, so what I want to do here is do IP unnumbered, look back zero, and IP OSPF network point to point. Okay, now if I go in and do my router OSPF1 network, all the networks. We've established an adjacency, see that? Only got the twos on it, and what we're doing is we're borrowing the loopbacks and saying this is a point to point, so just send it straight out of the interface. So it's this really cool feature which you can do to save you IP address and everything. So if I just do ping, there we go, I can ping it right across there. So let's just do it quickly on the last one, and I do in loop zero IP address. And I go and do an eth0 and do IP unnumbered, borrow the lookbacks address and do IP OSPF network point to point and do router OSPF1 and just put all the networks in. Adjacency pops up, show IP root, but if I do ping, I can ping the one and I can ping the two, okay? So I can actually ping right throughout the network. Now this is going to come in handy in our topology in the case of like when you just have transit links. In a case of maybe a, a core of an ISP or whatever, maybe every link is not going to be a destination, it's a transit link. There is no real purpose for it to have an actual IP address on this interface. You just want to just use the loopbacks in the case of what we're doing with BGP for a uh, well, the IGP for loopback discovery. So we're just going to effectively automate the creation of loopbacks, tell all the links to borrow the loopback addresses so we've got an actual underlay and then we're going to configure BGP on top of that. And that's going to be the plan. So let's just pause the video and I'll go back to the actual topology. Okay, so we're back. Let's look at the terminal then. So pull this up and just full screen this. And if you go into CD Nornier, We'll see that we've got the usual suspects, config YAML, defaults YAML, groups.yaml, host.yaml. Let's look at the hosts then, okay? So vim hosts. And you can see that what we've got is the host name, which is the IP address of the actual management. So I've actually got physical um, IPs on the red links. These are VRF, okay? So show IP in brief. That's all I've got. But on the production network, the connections between the routers have nothing on them, okay? So that's the IP address in there. And we've also just got this um, data key with ASN and it's 65001. That's going to be the autonomous system uh, number for BGP, okay? 
So that's pretty much that. If we just go out of that, and again, if we just do our usual Vim groups, same old, and Vim defaults to where our password is and stuff like that, okay? So, let's go and look at the actual script then, okay? And if we just do a Vim underlay, this is the script here, okay? So, from Nornir, importing it Nornir, nothing new here. We're going to be importing the print result module as well as NetMiko send config to actually send the configurations. Now, I've defined this function called underlay with the argument task. And what I've done here is I've taken the task.host.host name, which is going to reference the IP address, the dynamic IP address of each host as it changes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that to a string and give it the, or assign it to the variable called John. I wasn't very creative, so I just called it John, okay? <laughs> now, what I've done is I've also created this num variable, and what that's done is effectively it's taken the IP address and it's going to take the last character of it. We're going to use that for um, a unique identifier, so when we get actual our loopbacks, in fact, let me show you, it's probably easier if I just show you, okay? So, let's say when the IP address is 192.168.31.11, if I take that variable and just take the last character off, all I'm doing is taking off this little thing here. See the one here? And then I'm going to print that. So let's just look at this then. So if I run this just now, see it prints one. And then when Nornir goes to the next host device, which will be 12, it changes to two, okay? And again, once we go to three, we're taking the last character off three so when we do this we can actually parse out this information so we can get unique addresses for every single device so for example task.host.hostname for r1 is going to be 192.168.31.11 we're going to take off the last character which is a one that means for that device the loop back is going to be 10 10 10 1 okay now when we iterate to router 2 task.host.hostname now becomes 192.168.31.12 so if we take off the last character that's a 2 therefore when we assign that device a loop back it's going to be 10 10 10 2 this repeats and this repeats okay so it just allows us to get a different loop back for every device based on that changing variable which is the the last character of the IP address so we then defined variables um, called uh, interface loop back 0 IP address 10, 10, 10, and then we've taken this num and we've converted it to a string, okay? So that means the iOS likes it. And we're given the subnet mask, and then we've also decided to configure OSPF on that interface, okay? Then all we're going to do is deploy that by telling NetMiko the list of commands we're going to send to it are these commands here, okay? Same again, we go to OSPF, we're going to have certain commands called router OSPF1, router ID is going to be the loopback ID, or loopback IP, <laughs> and the loopback IP is 10, 10, 10, and string of whatever the last character of the management IP address is, so 192.168.31.14, take the last one off, so 4, so it's 10, 10, 10, 4, okay? So then... We do the same thing, we deploy OSPF with NetMiko and we tell the commands that we want to run are the OSPF commands, which are these commands, okay? And then we just do the same thing yet again, we go to interface commands and we list interface range Ethernet 0, 1, 2, 3, and that is if we look here, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, kept this nice and consistent for us. And we're going to do IP unnumbered loopback zero. That means all those interfaces are going to take the loopback address of that device. And all of those interfaces are going to be configured for IP OSPF network point to point. And they're all going to be activated for OSPF one area zero. Then what we're going to do is deploy the interface commands by telling NetMiko to send those commands, interface commands, which are these ones here. And then we get to the BGP stuff. Now, the BGP requires a loop because we're going to be peering with multiple neighbours, so it's going to be consistently changing. So what we've done is, for I in range, 1 to 9, okay? And what I've done here is, I've written if STRI equals STR num continue. What this does is it says that as this uh, range iterates through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, if i is taking the value of what our num is, 
remember the last digit in our character so if it's 192.168.31.14 take the last one's 4 if i is 4 when we are 4 continue over it the reason why we're doing that is because we don't want to try to peer ourselves in our in our bgp configuration so if our actual look back is 10 10 10 1 we don't want to do a neighbor of 10 10 10 1 just skip over it for that okay because it doesn't make any sense it's going to give an error and if we are on device 5 and our interface is 10 10 10 5 when we iterate through 1 2 3 4 5 skip over 5 because that's our own interface and we can't have a neighborship with that because again it's going to give us an error so that's the purpose of this little bit here it's a little control okay so then we get to the bgp commands we're going to just do router bgp and then we're going to take the task host and we're going to take the asn key which is from the let me just take that see the nornier and vim host we're actually going to be taking the value of this Okay, which is 65001 and because we're putting it into iOS we need to convert that number to a string okay so that's what we've done there the next command is the neighbor neighbor 10 10 10 and that's going to iterate through all the range here so 10 10 10 1 10 10 10 2 10 10 10 3 to get every neighbor relationship again though when we see our own um, address skip over that don't try to peer with ourselves and the remote AS is again Convert to a string the value task host ASN, which is just again the dictionary value in our host file ASN65001. Okay, then we just do the same type of thing here. We have update sources, look back zero. Again, we're just doing the neighbor with the continual uh, iteration 10, 10, 10, 1, 10, 10, 10, 2, with the password Cisco. And again, same process, but we're changing the timers to 10 and 30. Then we're going to just do deploy BGP and tell NetMiko to send all of those BGP commands okay, through the loop. Okay, so that should get us peering with every single device. So in the case of iBGP, you know that we have to peer with every neighbor um, to avoid that kind of split, that BGP split horizon problem. You can use root reflectors and confederation, but because we're using automation, the scalability of peering with everyone really isn't so much a bother, so I've just left it so that we've actually fully meshed all IBGP peers, okay? And at the very bottom, we know this part, we're just doing nr equals init nornier, give it the config files or config.yaml, and we're saying nr run and task equals the underlay function which we created and then print the result. And that's pretty much the script, okay? So with that said, let's go and deploy it and see what happens, okay? So just exit out this. Okay, so real quick, let's just go back to the topology just to show that there's nothing actually configured on these devices for a run this script. Okay, so show IP and brief. Again, all we've got is this management IP address, which is in its own VRF. We don't have anything for show IP OSPF neighbor, show IP uh, BGP sum. Nothing there, okay? BGP is not active. So what we're going to do is go across and deploy this script then. So, do you know what? I'll close this one and open you. Okay, so let's go and deploy the script then. So Python 3 and it's just underlay. And normally it's just going to power through all those commands. There we go. So as you can see, if we just scroll up, we can see what we've done. So router 8's peered with, uh, notice router 8 didn't peer with 10, 10, 10, 8. That was that little control mechanism we had there, okay? So we just scroll up through here, all our BGP stuff's been configured. Our OSPF stuff, okay? And then for 7, notice 7 will not appear with 10, 10, 10, 7. It's going to appear with 10, 10, 10, 8 and 10, 10, 10, 6. But it skipped 7. Again, that was the purpose of that, to avoid that error. Let me just go right up. Let me get to router 6. It's appeared with 8, 7, but not 6. It skips 6 and goes to 5. And this just continues on and continues on, okay? So let's go and just look at the actual devices. And if I do it, show IP OS p f neighbor we've got our neighborship and if i do a show ip bgp sum we've got all our bgp and like i say if we look at the ip addressing all we're doing is borrowing the loopbacks just repeatedly using the same ip addresses okay so it's really really easy to deploy on this uh, in this automated environment okay now obviously this is a very small scale, it's only 8 routers, but you can imagine this to be hundreds of devices or perhaps, well thousands if you want to scale it right up. 
And just before I do anything, let's go and maybe put a BGP route on something. So we'll do int loop 56, whatever. 56, 56, 56 dot one. And we'll do router BGP 65001 net 56, 56, 56 dot zero mask. And if we do show IP BGP, there's going we'll just go across to maybe router 8, it's far away, <laughs> and do show IP BGP, we've got that peered up, show IP root, BGP's in the table, and again, look at our interfaces, it's just the uh, loopback's getting reused, okay? So I suppose we'll just do a little bit of a ping test, okay? So show IP root, and the BGP root is the 56, dot 1, we can ping it, no problem, let's pick another router. Um, ping 56.56.1 and that's it. Okay, doke, so that's pretty much the end of the video. Like I say, if you want to lab this one up, just be aware that um, some platforms uh, don't support this on Ethernet interfaces. Like I say, I'm using Cisco IOU devices. So just be aware of that if you're going to do that. And last, I just want to thank you all. I've been getting lots and lots of really nice feedback and my private messages, lots of questions. Keep me engaged. Please keep that up. So, yep, that's the end of the video. Thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon.